Hey, thanks for stopping by my neck of the woods. I'm the gig geezer in Wood Lane, and when I'm out there driving, I'm out there to make some money. I want to help you maximize your gig hustle. I was toying around with the Uber Eats app today, and I noticed that monthly statements are, as they have always been there all year, um, were available specifically for the 2021 tax year. Now, how do you get there? All you have to do is in the top left corner, tap that uh, circle, which is where your picture is, um, hit account tab, hit the account tab, um, and then from there, hit tax information, and then you're gonna hit tax summary. Now, more than likely, as with Uber and Uber Eats, you'll receive a tax summary for the previous tax year if you did not make $20,000 or more. Personally, my totals should be showing at about $27,000 and change before Uber's expenses that I'll be able to claim. And my net was about $18,000. Now that's based on the, if I add up all the tax statements from January to December. At some point, very shortly, today is January 12, 2022. At some point, very shortly, I'll see a tax statement or possibly a 1099 NEC form for the entire 2021 year. So personally, I don't know whether I'm gonna get a 1099 NEC or the tax statement. Now, um, I mentioned some information already in a previous gig geezer segment, which I talk about a tax primer for the 220, 2022 tax season. For whatever it's worth, I mentioned in that segment that if you made the 20,000 or more, you should get a 1099K. Well, the 1099K is now used for when you receive third party payments. Those third party payments could be for royalties received for whatever, books, um, or for gambling earnings or online sales and other things like that. What independent contractors like yourself and I will receive if we make $600 or more from the various gig apps that we work on, um, and I mean by that $600 or more from each gig app that we work on, we are likely to receive a 1099 NEC form. Now, the NEC means non-employee compensation. It's another word for self-employed independent contractors. But check out this summary um, page from 2021, specifically December of last year. Notice some of the expenses. It says a Uber service fee. Don't know what it is, but it's something that's gonna be deducted. Sales and other taxes. That I can believe there are taxes that Uber has to pay to the local uh, governments or state governments. And that is then passed on through us. And then there are the instant pay charges. Now, I mentioned that in, a pre in the previous Gig Geezer segment in which whenever you have um, cashed out um, on your um, cashed out at any time during the week instead of waiting for that weekly deposit, all those 50 cent um, fees are fees that you can deduct on your taxes because it is an actual expense. And for whatever it's worth on other apps like Byte Squad, same thing. It's either the instant um, deduction, instant pay for $2.99 or the same day pay for $1.99. Each time you do that, that counts as an expense that you can claim on taxes. Now, I will note that I am not a tax preparer. I'm not a certified public accountant. The information that the, the content that I am providing in this segment is just information only, and that's it. Information, not tax advice. And by the way, if you like the content that's been provided in this segment of the Gig Geezer and in other segments of the Gig Geezer, hey, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up. I always welcome your comments in the section below. And if you would not mind, share my content with others. Now, You'll notice that for the month of December of last year, my gross earnings, which is before all these expenses, was $1,743.58. Come tax season, that'll be $1,744. Um, 
minus expenses of 555.57, or rounded up for tax purposes, $556. And the net pay is $1188.01. That is the number that we're likely to see whenever we are out there doing our hustle and after we hit the complete delivery tab, that number that shows up on a daily basis. And in fact, this number is very close to the number that I kept as a running tab of money earned um, for December 2021 as well. So that's pretty good for me, I guess. Now, what are some of the expenses that you should be compiling for your tax professional or if you're like me, when you're um, doing your own taxes. Now, earlier today, I finished compiling all of my expenses for 2021. I've kept a running count throughout the year, and so it only took me a couple of hours to go through each month and categorize each one and then reach a total. So when I do my taxes in a couple months, because I know that more than likely I'm gonna have to pay a self-employment tax, and hopefully very little of a federal income tax for whatever that's worth. Um, all I have to do now is just plug the numbers in the various tax forms. I mentioned in that previous segment, some of the tax forms that you should um, be attuned to using is your 1040 main form, a 1040 schedule C, which is your profit and loss statement, a 1040 SE, schedule se which is for your self-employment tax the self-employment tax kicks in when your self-employed earnings or your from that prior that uh, profit and loss page are four hundred dollars or more <laughs> now what else now i mentioned about i've been keeping a running tab i've also been keeping that running tab on an excel spreadsheet and i've configured it to work for me it's configured for me but it, it works for me now there are other there are apps out there that can help you do the same thing with compile with keeping a running tab of your of the money that you've earned each day or each week or each month and also with your expenses and it does all that for you i'm not aware of what they are but i'm pretty sure there are there there are apps out there also um if you know of them i certainly welcome your your comment so you can help the gig geezer out with that as well. Um, now, also, if you're keeping this running tab, it certainly will help for your tax preparer so that that person will not have to um, give you a hard time about, hey, I need, I need your help. Give me all your stuff. Have it together so I can get it done in a timely manner. It, it certainly would help. Now, I have, for whatever's worth, I have been, I have prepared my taxes for actually since the mid to late 1980s um but as a 1099 i've been a 1099 uh, since 2001 so i've prepared all my taxes since then and i actually have a copy of all my returns or tax forms that i have filled out since the late 1990s so um but you only have to keep them for 10 years actually but that's neither here nor there um but again, if you are self-employed, which you are more than likely, if you if your main income is derived by the gig economy, you are considered a independent contractor, self-employed person. I'm going to throw some expenses out there that I believe that you should keep as a running tab throughout the year. Again, this is not tax. This is not tax advice. This is just information. Um, medical insurance premiums. That's one. Um, vision, if you have vision uh, insurance, vision insurance premiums. If you have dental insurance, your dental insurance premiums. Another is if your vehicle for insurance purposes is classified for business use, you should um, keep a running tab of, but if, if it's just you, um, the insurance premium that you pay for the vehicle that you primarily used, if you, and, and I'll just leave it at that. Another thing that you should keep a running tab on is your cellular phone bill because your vehicle and your phone are your money in the gig economy. Now, I've also mentioned since I am an insurance agent um, and I have my own AG agency. Now, I've mentioned also that because I am an insurance agent and because I have my own agency, 
um, I have a lot of other expenses that I can actually claim. These are all legitimate, uh, verifiable expenses. And so um, it helps at the, at the um, it always helps. I'll just leave it at that. Now, because I'm an insurance agent and because I have my own agency, um, most of us um, have business accounts. And in the insurance world, uh, most of us as a rule of thumb keep two business accounts. One is for your deposits, for um, your commissions that come um, every month. And the other is um, for checks or expenses that are, that are going out. And one of your expenses that you should keep in, keep up with, at least you should do it at least once a year, I would think, is um, uh, uh, the expense for checks when you have to order checks. That is another uh, business expense that you should keep running tab on. Now, I mentioned about the uh, business account. At least for me, when I set up uh, my last uh, business accounts, it was at a major bank. And so the major bank uh, required uh, at least proof of the actual business entity. And the, the way to show proof of a business entity is to file your business as an LLC. Uh, and then from there, you file your business uh, name with the Secretary of State. And from there, you have your Articles of Incorporation. That is one way of validating your business, um, your business existence. The other thing is to um, get a business tax ID number. Now, because more than likely it's just you, your business would be seen as a sole proprietorship um, individual. And so the, 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 uh, that the name and you are going to be uh, interchangeable. In fact, it'll be your name doing business as whatever your business name is. So keep that in mind as well. Um, certainly when it comes to um, figuring out your expenses and income, if you have a, an account in which you have your expenses going out, an account in which your, your, um, your earnings coming in, it's one way of keeping up, keeping those separate, but also keeping up with everything. Now, what are some other expenses that um, should be keeping a running count of throughout the year? As a gig driver, other expenses are masks, hot cold bags, cup holders, um, a phone mount or phone cords, or the telephone itself. Those are expenses that are likely to occur in any given year or at any time. Now, the purpose of this segment of the Gig Geezer is just to get your mind thinking about tax season because the first day to file federal returns is January 27. And of course, your filing deadline is April 15, unless otherwise indicated by the IRS. If you have, um, if you need to find additional information, you can check irs.gov, G-O-V, or consult your tax professional. But again, all of this is just to help you get your mind going, thinking about how you're going to construct, put together your taxes, but also get your mind thinking as a business person, because this is a business, whether you like it or not, or whether you believe it or not. But with all that, this is another segment of the Gig Geezer. I'm in Wood Lane. And as always, may your hustle continue. Thank you for checking out this segment of the Gig Geezer. If you like the content that's been provided, hey, hit that subscribe button and also give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or useful information that you'd like to pass on to the Gig Geezer, I can be reached at giggeezer3.5 at gmail.com.